This video was sent to me by one of you guys, and it addresses an issue about FCC licensing and the use of amateur radio bands by someone other than hams. And for some reason, it uh, touches on an issue that I don't quite understand about using radios while paragliding. So let's check this out. This video was sent to me. It is from a channel called Heavy Metal Horizons. Now he's got a decent sized channel, 11,000 subscribers. Okay. I don't know why a heavy metal channel is talking about ham radio stuff. You can see his radio stuff in the background there. So we're going to go through this. This is only a five minute video. And we're going to go through this and um, see what he has to say here. And I want to know what you guys think about this. Hey guys, welcome back to Heavy Metal Horizons. And in this video, I've got a question to all of the hams out there. And that question is, are ham radio operators the only ones that care about ham radio rules? No. And I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to show you why. I'm going to give you an example that this guy should understand here in a second. So check this. Okay. So let, let's keep going. Now, before you answer in the comment section, I, I already did that. I want to give you guys an example of what I'm talking about, okay? I used to do paragliding, and I haven't done it in a couple years because I've just been busy with other things, uh, mostly with the airplane aviation stuff. Uh, but when I was doing parag... So I, I was... So airplane aviation, he mentions right here. So I was poking around here, and I found... He's talking about an affordable, an affordable aviation radio for pilots, finally. And I went through and I opened up this video from him, okay? And I will play the first few seconds of this. Wayman Tower, Iraqa, November 9 or 7, 2, 7, Echo. Can I get a quick uh, radio check, please? Iraqa, 9 or 7, 2, 7, Echo, Tower, have you loud and clear. Okay, so let's look at this from the standpoint of this. This guy's a pilot. Presumably, he's got his pilot's license. I don't, he didn't show his license, but, you know, let's, he does. He has his pilot license. He's got a legit call sign on his airplane. Good. Okay. So let's look at this from a standpoint of... What if I went and bought that radio he's talking about, which he got from AliExpress, and, you know, spoiler alert, I just went and bought that radio. Because <laughs> DFW Airport's right there. Right, right, right there. Well, back there somewhere. I'm getting turned around in my own ham shack. What if I got on the aircraft frequencies on AM and just started talking? Or what if me and my wife or me and my neighbor started using aircraft frequencies just to have regular, polite conversations about anything at all? Would that be okay? I just bought a radio that will let you transmit on airband. So that means I should be able to transmit on airband correctly. Correct? Correct? Yeah, well, that radio is from China. Yeah, so is a Baofeng. So, okay. Question, you no, know, something to chew on. Question for later. For later. Gliding, you would go and you'd go up to the top of the mountain or the launch area, wherever it was, and people would start getting their wings set up and their harnesses and everything, and you would hear this. Frequency mode. Okay. All those paragliding pilots were using ham radios, HTs. Uh, a lot of them were using the Baofeng UV-5R, and they were using these radios to talk to each other and in some cases maybe talk to somebody on the ground, like an instructor or somebody who was getting photos of them, that kind of thing. I saw another article on Reddit a while back about why ham radio operators and paragliders hate one another. And I've been a ham for 30 years, and I've never heard that before I saw this article. This was several months ago. And the only thing I can come up with is that what people who don't have radio licenses may not know, because you're not used to using a radio, okay? So you may or may, maybe you do know this, but... One of the things about getting a ham radio license is actually learning how to use the radio so that you can know how to use it, know what it does when you are using it. And a GMRS radio would work in this scenario very well, too. But the higher up you get, we have a term in ham radio called height is might. So the higher up your antenna is, the farther out you're able to talk. So if you're in a paraglider or you're doing parachute mobile like... Um, life at terminal velocity, like Carlos does, you are going to be able to talk a much longer distance on a 5-watt handheld 
than you would standing on the ground because you're standing on the ground tr trying to talk to other stations on the ground and you've got terrain, trees, hills, leaves, buildings, all kinds of stuff in between you and that other station. When you are several hundred feet or several thousand feet in the air, you have clear line of sight to all those ground stations. So your signal reaches out, out a lot farther because you are up higher. None of these guys had ham radio licenses, but of course, they were using a ham radio, and they were using it in the ham radio frequency band. And here is the big point that I'm making. If they're using it in the ham radio band, then it's then they shouldn't be doing that. So that's my answer. I'm going to show you the comment I, I left on this guy's video here in a minute. Because these were paragliding pilots, and they only used the radio for paragliding, they had really no idea about the other ham radio stuff. Uh, they didn't care at all about the fact that they were operating the radio without a license and, you know, violating these various FCC rules. Okay, so why don't they use their paragliding? They're in the air. Why aren't they using airband radios? Serious question. I, I, I really, I really want to know. You're in a paraglider in the air. You're talking to other paragliding stations. You are, you are flying an aircraft of sorts, talking to ground stations, talking to air stations. Why are you not using airband radio? I'd like to know. No, seriously, I'd like to know what your answer is to that. Because those are regulated by the FCC as well, by the way. And not only did they not have a problem, but nobody else who was aware that they were doing it had a problem either. Nobody ever said anything. Nobody ever... Ignorance of the law is no reason to not obey the law or something like that. I'm paraphrasing. ...got reported or anything like that. Now, realistically, your range is not going to be great on these radios, but... They're using these when they're up in the air, so exactly. you know, at least they're getting quite a bit of distance. And exactly, and you could do the same thing with GMRS radios too, by the way, which you just buy a license or just use FRS radios that are lower power and, and do the same thing. In terms of line of sight for the antenna and everything, so theoretically, if there was somebody, a ham in the area listening on VHF, they probably could hear what they were saying. Now, mm -hmm. maybe you could make an argument that, well, it's paragliding, and if they do something wrong, it could be potentially a life or death situation. So maybe the, the radio usage is justified because it's, it's almost an emergency, or if they don't use it, it could lead to an emergency. But to be clear, nobody, none of these guys were using these. That's not very, a very valid argument because he just said that hams were not listening. He, he said if a ham was listening, they could hear them. But he also said that hams were not listening. So who are you going to call if you get into an emergency situation? If all of you, if your whole crew in the air and on the ground had GMRS or FRS radios, you could call the same people. So that's not, and he said, he, he clearly states that he goes, this is not what they were doing. He's like, an argument could be made, but it's really not a valid argument. These radios like as a just in case kind of thing. It was just a radio that they would use basically as a walkie talkie, like a cheap walkie talkie to just talk to their other paragliding buddies that were flying. Now, of course, as far as I know, none of these guys got in any trouble uh, because number one, nobody except for the other paragliders really knew they were doing it. And a lot of them were totally clueless about the regulations. Okay, so um, once again, if nobody knows they're doing it, why aren't they using airband? So nobody's really aware that they're violating the regulations and nobody within that community, even if they knew about it, would go and like report their friends to the FCC. But if somebody got on that radio and was talking to a ham, you know, a licensed radio operator, that person would probably have a big problem with it. So ham. Probably so, yes. Comes within. And so would you. Okay, so this guy is Heavy Metal Horizons is the name of the channel once again. So I'm not a musician, but I know a lot of musicians. Let me ask you this, okay? You guys have these wireless receivers that you put on your electric guitars or acoustic guitars, an acoustic electric guitar, maybe wireless receivers. You put on a drum set, wireless microphones. You put on a drum set to go back to the soundboard in the, in the back of house, the rear of house, back of house, what it's called front of house, back of house. I know a little bit. I've run a soundboard in the past, but I'm not an expert at all. Okay. So you have these wireless headsets. The last ones of these wireless headsets, um, or not headsets, but wireless transmitters and receivers for microphones connected to your guitar being received by the mixing board, by the sound mixer, by the sound engineer running sound at the rear of house. Okay. So let's say the last ones of these I saw were like 510, 520, 530 megahertz, something like that. So what if I was to come into your venue where you're playing your electric guitar and start 
talking on that frequency that you're trying to use on your guitar. Do you think, would you have a problem with it? I mean, it's, you know, you're using the frequency legitimately and I'm using it illegitimately. I don't have a right to talk in that frequency, but I'm doing it anyway because what does it hurt? Serious question. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not joking with that. Now, if you are interested in getting your ham radio license, I suggest heading over to Ham Radio Prep. They offer courses for all three levels of license. They offer a Baofeng Basics course. They offer courses on HF radio and emergency communications, all the like. You can always save a 20% discount on all their courses with the coupon code of Jason20. So get your ham radio license so that you don't have to run into issues like this one. The amateur radio operating community do tend to police each other. But if someone outside of that community is using the radio, it doesn't really seem to amount to much. So my question to you... Well, that's very location dependent. I guarantee some places it would amount to a lot. You guys is, how do you feel about this? Do you think the usage of those radios is justified in that situation because there is kind of a safety issue involved, even though technically it's still violating the regulations? No, because you have many more options besides just the ham radio frequencies. In, in fact, he, he kind of contradicts himself, in my opinion, with this comment. I'm going to stop the video there. I'll put the video, I'll put a link to the video below. You guys can go read it. But here's the comment that I made. And Rob741 commented on this uh, two months ago when this video was new. I just found this a few days ago. Well, this was sent to me a few days ago. Okay, so my comment here is the Baofeng usually covers 136 to 174 and 400 to 480 megahertz. Ham frequencies are 144 to 148. So between 136 and 174, there is 38 megahertz worth of bandwidth there. 136 to 174 is 38 megahertz worth of, worth of frequencies. Inside of that 38 megahertz is only 4 megahertz, 144 to 148. That's the ham radio spectrum. And from 400 to 480, that is 80 megahertz worth of spectrum. And inside of that, there's only 30 megahertz worth of spectrum. That's ham. There are plenty of frequencies that the Baofeng radio can operate outside of ham frequencies. What purpose does it serve to use the ham frequencies? If you don't have a license, just talk somewhere else. And I know a lot of people will come by and say, well, I've talked about that, or I've seen videos where hams will uh, complain about people using frequencies, uh, you know, radios, Baofeng radios on 151 or non-licensed GMRS radios on GMRS free. Yes, and you know what? I think those hams are, are dorks. I think those hams are, are just looking for something to complain about. I don't understand that. If you want to use a radio on another frequency somewhere, I don't care. But the point is, the thing that separates the ham radio frequency is the same thing that separates the airband frequency, is the same thing that separates the GMRS frequency, is that ham radio operators have studied and gone through the steps to obtain the license to talk on those frequencies. Airband is set aside specific for specific air traffic control and, and conversations amongst airplanes and aircraft. And those frequencies have been set aside for that regard. So if I don't, if I'm not in an aircraft or I don't have an air pilot's, a pilot's license or some reason for being on those frequencies, I shouldn't be able to just talk on those frequencies whenever I want to, even how, how much I want to justify it in my own mind. GMRS is the same way. All you have to do is buy a GMRS license. No test, no external thing is needed. You just go pay $35 for a 10-year license and you get access to those GMRS frequencies, which are the same frequencies as FRS, by the way. They share the frequencies. But with a GMRS license, you can talk up to 50 watts. 50-watt mobile radio, 50-watt repeaters, 5, 8, 10-watt handheld radios, just like ham radio. And a GMRS radio would work beautifully in this situation. So why don't all those guys just get GMRS slash FRS radios, because they'd be able to do the exact same thing. So he replied to me, like uh, the same, uh, a day later, he replied to me. He's like, it's because not absolutely everyone is using the Baofengs. Some are using Yezu or Kenwood, so the ham frequencies are ones that everyone can use. Well, what purpose does someone who doesn't have a ham radio license, What? why do they own a ham radio? You know, back when I, back in my day, back in my day, back in my, seriously though, before Amazon and eBay, you had to go to a ham radio store to buy a ham radio, a Yezu Kenwood Icon ham radio, and guess what? You had to show your license to buy it. They wouldn't sell you a ham radio that would transmit on ham radio frequencies without proper documentation that you were licensed to operate those frequencies. I think maybe we should try to get Amazon to implement something like that. Hey, you want to sell ham radios? Great. Great. Show proof of your ham radio license before you're able to make the purchase. 
So his reply was, well, because people are using ham radios. Well, they, they don't need to. So my reply back to him, then they should have a license. Okay, just like Airband, just like GMRS. Some years ago, you couldn't even buy a Kenwood or use a ham radio without a license, similar to buying a gun now. You don't need a license to buy a handgun, to buy a firearm in the United States. I'm talking about the United States right now. You don't need a license, but you do have to show proof of ID. I live in Texas. I can't go buy a gun in Louisiana, Arkansas, New Mexico. I can't go buy a gun in another state. I can, but I can't take it with me. I can go purchase a gun in another state, go to a gun show, go to a gun shop, go purchase a gun in another state, and they will ship it to a FFL, Federal Firearms Licensed Dealer, in my home state where I have to show ID and do the background check thing. Now, background checks are a little bit unconstitutional in my opinion because the right to firearms is protected by the Second Amendment, the Constitution of the United States, but I'm not getting into that right now. Whatever the ambiance or whatever the political crap behind this, the, the simple fact is that today I can't go buy a handgun in another state without getting it shipped home and having to show my ID and proof that I'm eligible to buy that firearm to an FFL inside of my state. Ham radio should be the same way. Some schmo shouldn't be able to get on eBay or Amazon and buy a ham radio that will transmit on ham radio bands. They don't have any uh, business being there. And this guy and this other video here, he's talking about this unaffordable aviation radio for pilots, and he gives a link to AliExpress. And anybody, and this this HT will transmit on airband. Maybe I should uh, grab one of these and go just start talking to pilots. Just, oh, I'm just talking to pilots. What? I bought a radio that will transmit over there. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm being a little bit facetious right now. I don't actually think I want to transmit on airband, although airband receive radios are cool. So what do you think? I mean, the original title of the original video was, Do Only Hams Care About FCC Regulations? Well, guess what? Your guitar transmitter and receiver is regulated by the FCC. Your airband frequencies, which this guy's obviously a pilot, is regulated by the FCC in the, inside the United States I'm talking about. So do you care about when someone uses your frequencies that's not licensed to do so? There you go. I want to know. Put a comment below. Thank you for watching today. His pinned comment. Now, this is, this is, this is kind of cool here. His pinned comment to the top of his video right here says, Attention, Los Angeles ham radio operators. So if any of you, if that applies to any of you guys, you might reach out to this dude. Would you like to help me make videos? Sometimes I need to make a video contact with another ham. Another ham. So I guess he's, he is a ham maybe. As part of a video. I'm looking for a person or people who are okay with their voice being heard. Maybe you could even collaborate on some videos. If you're interested, click on my channel name and then go to the more about section. You can find my email there. So there you go. If you live in the Los Angeles area, go hit this guy up. Maybe you can make some good collaborations with him. I don't know your name, Mr. Heavy Metal Horizons, but if you want, ever want to collaborate with me, I'd be happy to do so. We don't have to agree. I like having adult, reasonable, calm conversations about subjects that we care about, whether we agree or not. So, But I would like to know what you, the audience, thinks. Put your comments below 73.